Hi, I'm Morticia, a microbiologist, medical laboratory scientist, and a science communicator that uses my digital platform on the internet to debunk and discredit misinformation as it relates to public health. And that's quite a mouthful already, so I really struggled with the best way to introduce myself to this platform, and after going back and forth quite a bit, I landed on a rather obvious answer. I'll be honest, and I'll just tell the truth. Now, maybe that title kind of gives it away. I was indoctrinated as a child, but today I'm a scientist that fights against misinformation, so how did all of that happen? There's a lot of time between the beginning and the end of that sentence. What changed and what got me to where I am today? So whether you're coming from TikTok or other social media, or we've never met each other before, I hope that this video helps you get to know me a little bit better and that you can know what to expect from my channel. But to talk about all of that, we really have to go back to the beginning. And for me, the beginning is in a small little trailer park just off the highway in a city called Anchorage, Alaska. For me, this is the beginning because up until I left Alaska, the majority of my life had been spent inside of this little trailer park. Because if that didn't give it away, I grew up very poor. Poor enough that I have many memories of spending Alaskan winters in this trailer park with no heat or no electricity. And if you don't know much about Alaska, you should know it's very cold. Now, I think most people already know, it goes without saying, that being poor puts you at a significant disadvantage for all kinds of things, but especially in relation to your education and your schooling as a child. But I got lucky, and this wasn't the only thing standing between me and my right to access a quality education. I was further disadvantaged by the fact that I was being raised by religious parents. So on Fridays, I would go to mosque with my stepfather and hear about how science was propaganda from the government. And on Sundays, I would go to mass with my Catholic mother and hear about how evolution was a lie from the devil. But the disadvantages just kept coming. Almost ironically, my religious, impoverished parents decided the best place for me would be in a religious private school. <laughs> the irony is not lost on me either, I promise. So by the time that I completed my high school education and graduated from high school, the majority of my exposure to science courses consisted of little blurbs and little books like, the Loch Ness Monster is real actually. Non-avian dinosaurs and humans totally coexisted at the same time. Evolution is a lie from the devil and global warming is a communist agenda. Not even remotely exaggerating, by the way. Which is to say that if you've ever felt inadequate or like you're just not smart enough for pursuing biology or any other sort of science education, please rest assured knowing that I walked into my very first biology lecture as a freshman biology major, not knowing what mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell even meant, I thought that was a meme from the internet. If I can do it, you can do it too. Now, I would love to be able to sit here and tell you that education was all that it took and that after entering college, the veil of ignorance fell from my eyes and that I was able to enter the world unhindered by the shackles of religious indoctrination and brainwashing. Unfortunately, that isn't how it panned out. The truth of the matter is, when you spend someone's entire life reinforcing this idea that if they choose to believe something that contradicts what they've already believed, that they will literally burn eternally in a lake of fire, it is very difficult to pull them away from that. Ask me how I know. So Morticia was a biology student that didn't believe in evolution. Embarrassing, but that doesn't really tell you how I got to where I am today and why I became a science communicator dispelling misinformation. I'll just put it this way. If there is one thing you have to gain from being failed by the justice system, it is a very strong, rather ironically, sense of justice and sense of what is right versus what is wrong. Because after 15 years of my family, my siblings and I battling a governmental body of authority for some admission of wrongdoing, for an acknowledgement that lies and neglect left a group of children irrevocably traumatized, Instead, what we got was an admission that mm, entertainment and money is just so much better than telling the truth and holding people accountable in a display of justice. So I guess I can thank the state of Alaska and the failures and neglect of its court system for motivating me and pushing me in the direction of advocacy and activism. Though as a college student, I originally envisioned this to look like me working in forensics, working inside of the criminal justice system to fight for crumbs and scraps for other victims, today it looks like I'm a passionate scientist defending truth and fighting against misinformation and pseudoscience. So my friends, it is through all of these journeys that I have come to where I am today as a scientist and a science communicator. 
my firsthand experience in poverty and seeing how being impoverished puts people at a unique disadvantage in regards to both education and literacy. My journey through religion and seeing how religious institutions work quite diligently and efficiently at restructuring the very bounds of reality so they can control what their followers think, believe, and know to be true about the world around them. And finally, my experience with the justice system, seeing how even the most vulnerable and disenfranchised people will be failed with lies, spectacle, and entertainment taking priority over the truth, taking priority over justice, and of course, taking priority over what is right. Or to more concisely put it, omnia mea me cum porto, or I carry with me all my things. All of these journeys and these experiences that I've been disadvantaged to experience give me the advantage of being able to be a better, more effective, and more insightful science communicator. And they are why I chose to enter this space, why I chose to become a science communicator in this post-truth era, or as Carl Sagan put it, the era where we are celebrating ignorance. Because people who are poor, who didn't get the opportunity to access quality education, who never got the chance to go to college, they deserve to learn about science too. People who have been indoctrinated, brainwashed, and lied to and manipulated about religion, about the world around them, about what is true and real versus what is wrong and fake, they deserve to learn all of those things too. And so does anyone else who has ever been disadvantaged by any system, by any institution that favors entertainment and lies over truth, reality, and justice. This is why I'm a science communicator. This is why I'm a science communicator that prioritizes dispelling misinformation to benefit public health. Because I think everyone has the right to access education. Everyone has the right to access knowledge. Or as Louis Pasteur put it, science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and it is the torch that illuminates the world. And you know, I think it goes without saying at this point, science, knowledge, and education are under attack. And it's not just a problem in my part of the world, it's a global problem at this point. So that means we need all hands on deck. We need as much help as we can get. So I hope you join me in my defense of truth and I hope you help me stand up for science. You certainly don't have to be a scientist to be here. You don't have to hold a degree or even be educated formally in the sciences to care about what is right and to care about what is true versus what is wrong and what is fake. Like on TikTok, I'll be using this platform, I'll be using this channel to not only provide free education for anyone that wants to learn about science, I will also provide you education in regards to learning how to discredit misinformation, learning how to see through the bullshit, and learning how to discern for yourself whether something is true or whether something is false. And it is my hope that you don't just keep that knowledge and those tools to yourself, but that you carry them into your communities, into your social circles, your homes, and your third places, and share them with the people that you love and that you care about. So that not only you can be protected from misinformation and pseudoscience, but the people that you love can be too, and hopefully they will share that information with other people that they know and care about. Carl Sagan likened science and critical thinking to a candle in the dark that can be carried into the dark, demon-haunted world that lies all around us. It is my hope that you will help me carry that light of science into that dark, broken, scared world, and we can make it a little bit of a brighter place. So thank you for being here, and thank you for coming on this journey with me. I know we have a lot of work to do, and we have so much to learn, so I won't waste any time. We're going to jump right into it, and I'm sure that I will see you all very soon.